Hello and welcome to Advertisers Watching Ads. This is a weekly show where brands watch other brands' ads. Hi, I'm Tom Holton. I'm the founder of Automated Creative and we are brought to you as ever by Contagious. So please go and check those guys out after the show. So before we get to this week's ad, let's meet this week's guests. I'm Zoe Chowney. I'm CEO and founder of a company called Bacano. Hi, I'm Bronwyn Foster Butler and I am currently in between jobs, but soon to be the uh, CMO at Hi, everyone. James Douglas. I'm SVP Performance Marketing at Publicis Media. What an amazing panel. Aniston have created a website called The Truth Undressed, which seeks to destigmatize conversations about vaginas, vulvas, and female genitalia. And they've created a video to go along with it. Let's have a look. Ah, the internet. It's got it all. Except that. We'll take it from here. We're The Truth Undressed by Caniston. We're filling the internet's last knowledge gap. The facts about vaginas and vulvas that are never taught. You're welcome, internet. Because when no one tells us about our bodies, it's easy to believe anything. Maybe our body isn't right. No, nope, nope, not a vagina. That is an orange. Maybe we need to change it. Maybe we need to do more. Don't stress. We got you. Come and find the truth. The reality. All the big, long, dark, and even hairy, honest versions of normality with real vulvas, pubes, and discharge. That's right, nudity. For education, not entertainment. But we can't share it here. So find the facts and fight shame at the truth undressed. What we always do is vote on a scale of one to five how great that whole activation is. So one, two, three. A four, a four, and a three. Mm. Three and a half. Well done, Caniston. That is a that is a relatively high scoring. Uh, James, what's going on here? What's the wider campaign doing outside of this video? For me, it's a straight education play. So there's a pure opportunity to set up an experience, set up something to really change the conversation to become a lot more relevant to niche audiences that probably are just being lost in your typical corporate experience on the Caniston.co.uk site. I thought it was great. And it's interesting, James, you say niche, because I would say that women are not niche. <laughs> but I think that's the patriarchy at work because we've been taught that we are niche. So I think what's great about it is it's you can tell it's an all female team behind it because there's actual lived experience insight guiding it. I think what I'm looking for next would be how do they actually do something beyond what for me was a PR play. I'm glad Bronwyn you, you called out the word niche. But for me, I want to go back to who do you think the target consumer is for this? The way I go into this is it's definitely younger. I say that in the context of we just we've given up all hope for old people who Victorian norms, Victorian standards, and just, you know, whisper, you know, these things. But younger, but I I think Dudes, you know, destigmatizing dudes, creating allies. It's it's probably for for you know, I'm I'm pretty old, but younger males to, you know, have a conversation, have, you know, be more aware of this and not, you know, straight up not pornography. The hook that I would kind of bring to it though, is it bold enough? Don't get me wrong, it's bold, but it's an isolated experience. And that's where I was going with this educational sort of external site that it is, this experience, like it could be so much more. It could really hopefully generate conversations, generate allies. I would hope that, you know, there's there's an opportunity to bring it more central to the the broader brand messaging that Keniston yeah. is putting out there. But let's hope this is just a start, you know? I mean, from small acorns do big oak trees grow and all true, that. True. Um, yes. And you've got, to, you've got to start somewhere. I think it's great. I think anything that destigmatizes things like this is only a positive thing. It's about time people could, could talk openly. Is people's bodies. You know, for the younger generation, there's so much sexual content on the internet, which they're exposed to these days, more than, you know, when I was a kid, obviously. I think it's so nice to actually have education out there and just to try and get rid of that stigma and enable people just to talk openly about, about issues and learn about themselves and know that Everybody's different. There is no normal or standard. The more people understand, the less stigmatized things are. And the more people understand, the less scary it seems and the less of a taboo. And yeah, it's just a really positive thing.
The thing that I was most disappointed by, frankly, is there was no link from caniston.co.uk, like the primary site, to this. But there's plenty of links back from Truth Untold back to Caniston. And I'm like, yeah, it's it's a one-way conversation. That's not cool. Like, really bring it in. Make it part of your initiative. That's the point that I'm saying. Could they have gone more bold? I would have loved to have had a little bit more of sort of collectivism of bringing the industry along. A bit like Tony's Chocolate Only do a great job of making how to remove slave labor from a chocolate supply chain. And they it's open source for any chocolate brand in the world. I think that's going to create real change. I think Tony's is great at is they're having conversations with the big food manufacturers to try and create change across the industry. And what I would have loved to see or love to see next from Bayer is that bringing people along, changing taboo, what other pharmaceutical firms are they reaching out to? And I think the fact that it is just us right now or us goes to show that there is sort of the marketer behind there being like, we're going to drive all this traffic and make Caniston the most beloved thrush cream brand in the world. I like in Scotland, you probably heard about they've got a period dignity officer. Wasn't it a man though, Zoe? (laughs) Yes. Yes, it was. Ah. Now, I had in, initially, I thought, really? A man has got this job? And then I read more about it, heard interviews with the guy. Bless him. He is bloody fantastic. You know, the, the statements he's put out, he's just so thoroughly excited and passionate about doing this job. He really wants to destigmatize it. I think the fact it's a man talking about it, in some ways, it's actually a good thing because it's got it into the news, it's got it into the media, it's got people talking about it. And why shouldn't men talk about it? Mm. And that helps, I think, with the um, taking away the stigma and the taboo of talking about it. And the more people that understand, more people that engage with it, I think the better. But yeah, it's a guy. And this is a campaign about destigmatizing genitalia. The penis isn't stigmatized. So why is it that we've even been calling it a vagina when it's actually called a vulva? The level of miseducation that is across the entire population is so vast that I think the more publicity for all women's health issues, the better. And yeah, seeing a guy champion it, I think will make other men, like even my husband, so I'm telling you, he's like, do you need tampons? He's like, he has to whisper it. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> What's your performance view of this? It's challenging with the type of content, the automated filters from partners to sort of ban or kick elements out just by virtue of, you know, AI decisions that are incredibly biased, not really understanding the content that's on the website. I would say it's it's a delicate balance, and I'm sure they debated this, and I'm sure there's legal considerations. But for me, where I would go, kind of bringing this closer to really, truly evolving your product, the way you position your product toward younger audiences would be more of hopefully the direction I would hope they're going. And this might be, I think, Zoe, you said acorns building a tree. It's it's hopefully this is the first step on a much bigger journey to truly get there. And this just is, you know, my worst case scenario would be this is just a a one-off example that just disappears in a year or two and is lost and forgotten like too many non-branded websites tend to be. Maybe they were too scared about getting accused of trying to profit and monetize off education of, of such a subject. And and I think that's a shame. I think if they're doing a good thing, profit from it, drive engagement, drive drive lead sales, business, whatever. If you can make doing the right thing commercially viable and positive and, and hit your bottom line, it's going to encourage more companies to do exactly the same thing. Yeah. I mean, I just think that the brand is the entire business and it touches every part of it. And I think for a brand to say that it you know, it has a purpose that isn't just a marketing tool. It has got to permeate every level. Otherwise, Gen Z are going <laughs> to sniff it out. They're not going to take it. I think that if they're going to be bold enough to say that they have a purpose, the marketing director or CMO, whoever it is, has to do the enrollment with the entire C-suite so that then whatever it is that marketing is deciding to do, there's a question and, and really deep analysis of what does this mean for finance? What does this mean for HR? What does this mean for procurement? So that it is something that they can truly stand behind and it doesn't just become a flash in a pan or worse, you know, blown back in their face. I couldn't agree more. Hopefully there's a constituent in the brand to help drive that moving forward. Yeah, so I think that's a a really nice place to to leave it. Zoe, Bronwyn, James, thank you so much. 